So, we're back. My name is Simon and this is an architecture tour of Half-Life 2. Uh, previously we just started the game when we walked through the beginning area, which is the train station. And now we're gonna walk through these doors. And the bird noticed how it flies that way. And we look up and we see... We get our first encounter with the Combine Citadel. Now, let's talk about towers. Obviously the Combine Citadel is a tower that goes all the way up into the clouds. Now towers are... In many ways, they are a symbol of power. And then they are that because you know, they defy gravity, they stand up against gravity. Anything that stands up is active, right? Any, anything that's lying down is, is inactive. And so, if something stands up like that, you know someone built it. And the taller it is, the more difficult it is to build, and therefore the more powerful the people who built it is. And so, you know, in medieval, towns and cities, the cathedral spire will often be the tallest structure in the town. And then later on in Renaissance Italy, the families of the city, the, or the powerful families of the city, will build towers to stake the territory and then to demonstrate their wealth and their um, engineering ability, or at least the engineering, engineering ability they can hire with their money. And then so on, and then there's the Eiffel Tower, and even now, you know, every so often someone will try to build the tallest building in the world and they'll make a big deal out of it. Because it is a symbol of, of economic power and engineering ability. And it's something that people take pride in. And so, when we see this, the Combine Tower, going up all the way into the clouds, much taller than anything else. Like everything that's man-made is only like, what is that, five, six, seven stories max? That thing goes all the way up to the clouds and beyond. So it's immediately obvious, immediately obvious that the Combine is much, much more powerful than us. And then, just to, you know, emphasize the point, here's a human towering shape, a monument, which is also, you know, a symbol of, I guess, a, of power. And it's, it's small. Not only is it small, it's been taken over by Dr. Breen here, who stuck his face onto it, and he's telling us to not reproduce. So, you know, this this kind of, this echoing, and then this comparison, is, it's, not, it's not accidental. It's done on purpose. And it, especially though, because it's, it's offset from the entrance too, so that when you walk out, you know, you don't see this. You see this. And that's not accidental, because this would seem to imply that, you know, we, we are... Maybe we are a match for it, or maybe we are fighting against it, but that this... It's quite clear that, you know, we're stepping aside for it, for something bigger. And, you know, towers are also, in a way, metaphors. You know, other symbols of power are things like, you know, weapons, like a sword or a spear, which is also a long straight object. And uh, another symbol of power is the penis. I mean, I don't want to make, you know, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but the penis is also a symbol of power. You know, guys compare the size of their penises to see who, who's bigger and, and therefore who's more manly, and supposedly who's, who's more capable at, rep at reproducing. But uh, I'm not sure if that actually works in reality, but the idea is that the bigger your penis the better you are, you know, in a, in a really kind of juvenile and, and caveman sort of way. But it's not, you know, people use these metaphors. And then when people kind of compare the size of their skyscrapers, sometimes we say, well, they're just comparing the penis as just silly, you know, being silly boys. And it's, it's also <laughs> interesting that Dr. Breen here is talking about reproduction and that we're not allowed to reproduce because, again, about power and, and, the, and the power of kind of sexual control. You know, in certain animal groups, only the dominant males get to reproduce. And so, so the, the alpha male gets the mate of all the, all the females and the subordinate males don't get to produce or don't get to reproduce. And, you know, you, 
what Dr. Breen is saying here evokes that sort of thing, you know. Our reproduction is suppressed because we don't have the power to fight for it. We don't have the strength to fight for it. And so we just do what we're told. We can't even have sex. So anyway, let's, let's not you know, carry that metaphor too far. But it's important to keep in mind, you know, at the very least, that this right here is, is an unambiguous demonstration of the power of the Combine. And then the penis metaphor... <laughs> I'll, 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 okay, I'll drop it soon, but it'll come back later. Yeah, it'll come back later. But for now, that, that's enough. Enough to say that whatever we've done has been hijacked and has been completely overshadowed and dominated by the Combine. Now, as for the rest of the square, or the plaza, I think they call it, it's, it's quite nice. It's somewhere in the Eastern European region, although the hotel is in English. Terminal hotel that's in English as well. So it's not entirely sure where we are, but somewhere in Europe. Uh, these buildings are again, like I said, like in the yeah, like in the previous videos, I said it was somewhere from pre-war to around the 60s, and maybe that's a bit later. So yeah, so nothing, nothing Let me read a letter I new, week. nothing really new. And you might also notice we don't have any skyscrapers here. Mm, I said that before, so everything society. seems slightly historic. And one of the reasons for that is, of course, to contrast with the futuristic of course, your uh, look of the Combine architecture. No entry. <laughs> I also detect some unspoken questions. And one more thing I want to talk about is is the way the combine what gives them the right takes over our buildings. Look at this. That's like a, I think that's like a watchtower that's been kind of grafted onto the human architecture and that the combine bridge that's been constructed onto the human buildings and then these walls which have been put into our human plaza. And this is, again, not accidental. It's, again, this idea of invasion, of taking over, of taking control. And so, you know, th these bits of combine architecture is, is grafted into human architecture, and then it takes over the human architecture and repurposes them for, for combine use. And, and interestingly, it, it's, a, you know, it's analogous to what the headcrabs do. You know, we haven't encountered any headcrabs yet, but later on we'll see them. You know, the head crabs attach themselves onto the head of humans and then they take over the human body and turn it into one of them. And, and it makes the zombies kill other humans. And so in a way, these things are like head crabs for architecture. They take over the architecture to make them hostile to us. So, you know, the, the, these metaphors and these analogies are, ca are carried through in, in different manifestations. Well, let's keep moving. I mean, in terms of gameplay, obviously these walls prevent you from going in those directions. Because, yeah, back to the corridors and rooms thing. This is a room. The corridor is that way, by the way. So there's only one way you're meant to go. But it's not obvious at first. So most new, new players will be encouraged to just look around. Souvenirs, that's cool. Baltic. Yeah, there we go. We are around the Baltic, probably. So yeah, new players are encouraged to walk around the square and get lost for a little while. While they, you know, see what's going on in the city and, and, and absorb the way the Combine have, have changed how the city works. Let's harass this guy. Yeah, pushed around. We should thank our benefactors for and these people will say, I'd like to help you, but it's out of the Yeah, so they can't even stop to talk to you. Anyway, let's get moving. Uh, this city. I mean, the streets are wide enough for cars. 
So I guess the city can't be that old. You know, like really, really old cities. The the roads will be too narrow even for cars. Yeah, this guy stops even going in. You can see inside they're beating some people up. I think is that building reused from here? Yeah, so that building is exactly the same as that one there. So they reused the the models and then textures and all that. But that's alright. It's not too obvious. The train station. The train station is symmetrical. And you see all these windows. We never saw these windows from the inside. Do you remember? The door I think I think we can go back in, but I won't. We rem we have we remember the ticketing you hall was here and then back here those windows weren't there. Why has the <laughs> yeah, so okay. So a little bit of strangeness, but I mean the casual player wouldn't notice the repetition and then the, the fact that the windows don't match on the inside and outside. So what is another wall here? And an intimidating guy. Let's try walking this way. We're not supposed to. Whoa. Whoa. Having a bad day? Yep. Not happy. Not a happy guy. So another wall here. Where we're supposed to go is here. I think we just jump out. Yeah. So conveniently. Like there are no other fire escapes anywhere else on the map. But conveniently there's one here. I guess this adds to the idea that you know, now you're going somewhere you're not supposed to. Here we go, so we got past the wall. That guy got messed up. You'd think they realized this, but anyway. So here. This is how it always starts. First the building, then the whole block. They have no reason to come to our place. Don't worry, they'll find one. You know, in a different context, that could be quite racist. You know, people moving into your neighborhood. Anyway. So, you know, again. They're reinforcing the idea that they're being invaded and taken over. We have a little quiet alleyway here. These are residential houses. Again, fairly plain, but... You know, fairly convincing. We have a creepy door. And again... Wow, aggressive. So this is the, you know, we just came through another corridor and we into another room and another corridor. But, it, you know, it's not obvious. It's not obvious. Although... You know, you... Okay, okay. Like, you're not allowed to go there. But at least it's suggested that there are other areas in this city. Even though they're not part of the game. So this is the only place we're allowed to go. And actually, I think I'll leave it here for now. Because the next part will be this apartment building. Which... Yeah, I'll come back to this apartment building after this.